We here back with uh, at, at Angel Park at Super Bowl 58. It is a tremendous pleasure and an honor to have this guy right here today. One of my idols, uh, growing up as a an amateur hockey player, Mr. Marty McSorley. Um, multiple Stanley Cup champ. How many? Marty? I, I was fortunate enough to win two in, two. Ed in Edmonton. Unbelievable. Greatest, it, it, greatest show on earth. <laughs> it, buddy, it really was. Yeah. I mean, there, there were some great teams. Obviously, the Canadians had great teams. But I don't know if anybody was better than the Oilers that, uh, that, that you played on. Yeah, they were you tremendous. Know, the NHL acknowledged one of the teams as the best team in the last 100 years. Yeah. And it was funny. Mark and Wayne didn't think they got the right year. Ah. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> because, they, you know, there was guys that, at the time, uh, it was one of the first times that two guys came back from Europe even. Yeah. And signed with us just to try to have, win a Stanley Cup. And they were phenomenal players that their teams at that, at the time was wanting them to come. And they were like, no, we're just going to stay in Europe. We put our time in the NHL. Mm -hmm. And they, then I think Glenn Sater reached out and they jumped at it. Right. Was that Curry? That was actually uh, Rayo Rutsalainen, the yes. Finnish defenseman who used to play for the Rangers, who yep. was a phenomenal player. And mm -hmm. on our really fast ice in Edmonton, he lit it up. And then Kent Nielsen. Mm -hmm. Kent Nielsen made our what we called our second line. Mark mm -hmm. Messier, Glenn Anderson, and Kent Nielsen. Every one of them, like, multiple 50-goal scorers. And, yeah. and that was our second line. I mean, yeah. we, we intimidated teams with our morning skates. Uh, no question <laughs> about it. Well, he, you know, and as a fan, it... it you just didn't want to see your team, I grew up with the Bruins and the Kings, go up to the, is it the Northlands Arena, yeah. right? I mean, that, what was it about that ice that just, it was like, you know, it was like a methamphetamine ice. Oh, well, it was, it so was fast. that Glenn Sather built a team. Glenn Sather, our coach and general manager, yeah. had played for the old Montreal Canadiens. He yeah. bounced around a little bit as a player, but what I think it did is it gave him an opportunity to see styles of play. And Montreal had that that French the the, the French flying Frenchman that they were they were really talented. He saw how they played. He also was familiar with the WHA when it first came in, and right. that's when a lot of the really talented Swedes came over. Yeah. Bobby Hall went to Winnipeg. And Wayne played. Wayne came over. He, from, uh, yeah, right? yeah, and Wayne, yeah. Wayne well Wayne came. He joined as a 17-year-old, but that league really played wide open hockey. Yes. And so uh, Glenn Sather drafted accordingly, made mm -hmm. it that way. And the fact up in Edmonton, they didn't, didn't use the building a lot. Yeah. So the people in the building could keep the temperature. The humidity is a huge factor. Edmonton's not really humid to begin with. It's pretty dry. Right. And that ice just became lightning fast. God. It oh, it was fast. just, it was so <laughs> lightning fast. But, you know, we also, the whole division, was yeah. it was at such a great time in Alberta because Calgary it? developed Calgary a great, great team, but Winnipeg, like Dale Howard Chuck, was in Winnipeg and he, he was, was a great. marvelous player. Yes. and they finished fifth overall in the league and nobody ever talked about them. Right, and, and that's with playing Edmonton and Calgary. Yeah, you know, seven or eight times a year. It, it, Lanny McDonald up there with Calgary. That yeah. was yeah, those were they, some great. Rivalry, Joel Otto, right? Doug Gilmore, uh, Joe Nguyen. Uh, they had nine guys on that team in 1989 in Calgary. Yeah. Who we had, you know, we beat them out the year before, and they were first overall in the league, and we beat them in the second round of four straight. It was, and that's how our, our division was. But they had nine guys in that 1989 team that won that scored 50 goals at one time in their career. Unbelievable. Yeah. Marty, so you grew up in Ontario, right? I, I grew up on a farm. You grew up, well, you can tell. Yeah. Big dude. <laughs> well, I, mean, I got hey, my hey, butt kicked hey, by my brother. I just gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta tell people this. If you guys out there that are watching this have not seen Marty McSorley when he played with the Kings and with the Oilers, Go check YouTube out and look at this guy. He had the flow. He had the golden locks. He was he was the toughest guy in the league. He could score. He could do it all. So uh, just, again, what a pleasure. So you grow up in Ontario, correct? Right. And you played baseball, too. Yeah. Loved it. Loved it. We actually, there was what was really big across Canada mm -hmm. was fastball underhand. And oh, wow. a ton of kids played. And actually, when I then started to play in Pittsburgh as a 20-year-old, some of my buddies that I would pl had played with would go down in the U.S. and play with a lot of guys who maybe had retired from AAA, AA, who wanted to still play. Mm -hmm. But they so they'd play fastball where they brought all the Canadians down. So I had good buddies that would make twenty five, thirty thousand dollars in the summer, pay for their university and their college. Oh wow! And pitch all summer. But I had 
grown up playing with those guys yeah. and it was they're good athletes i would love to have seen some of them try to play baseball and then see where they could have gotten to yeah but but loved it but uh, at, on the farm mm -hmm. with six brothers and three sisters there was 10 where kids. were you in the mix i so, was fifth number five yeah i had three older brothers oh wow i went away to my junior team i got invited yeah to junior yeah i get there and i'm like under no circumstances am i going home yeah and so uh, Wayne Gretzky's dad's best friend was a scout for the team. Uh -huh. And I didn't know Wayne. I didn't you know long before that we played together, whatever. And this sure. gentleman showed up behind the bench on the first scrimmage. He said, they need somebody to look after these young guys. Mm. And I don't have to tell me twice. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so about the second day, one of the guys says, aren't you tired of fighting? And I said, I'm not going home. Wow. And they said, but, you know, you're fighting anybody and everybody. And right. I said, whoever thinks that they want a All shot at <laughs> right. But, but the crazy thing is the one kid says, well, and I, I said, listen, you don't understand. It's easier for me to fight you guys yeah. than to go home to the farm and fight my brothers. That's what I was going to ask you. So <laughs> these brothers were physically big like you are. Oh, yeah. So the, so and they were, they, were, they were, a couple of them were mean. Yeah. No, they, I mean that. They were mean. <laughs> you're, always, you're always mean to the younger brother. That's how it works. So they, they really got you primed. Yeah. Well, uh, you know. Growing up in that environment, like yeah. when we're we're out in the one big old long chicken barn, we we made it into a ball hockey shoot pucks the whole nine yards, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. But there was no way out of there. You're right. in a you're in a game with your brothers. There's no way out, and you're a long. You're, you can't go cry to anybody. Sure. You have to figure it out. Yeah. You know, find a way not to get beat on and to give it back. Uh, right? And you did that. Yeah. So, but <laughs> so that from that mindset, right? Yes. Like my oldest brother had said to me in the barns when we were working. I yeah. was, you know, upset. My one of my older brothers did something. I was going to go to the house. Yeah. I'm six years old. He yeah. says, if you go to the house, and I have to go get you. Oh, <laughs> that would be it. How, how thrilled were they when you made it to the you NHL, Marty? You, you know, I think they were grounding from yeah. the standpoint that it, they were, a matter of fact, what, you know, what are you doing tomorrow? What are you going to do? You know, yeah. where are you at type of thing? And I'd yeah. be training and whatever. And, you know, they, they'd be like, are you doing enough injuries? They're like, you know, are you looking after or all of those things? And, yeah. you know, I get a phone call going, you need to shoot the puck more. Right. Things yeah. like, and, yeah. and, you know, which is. You know, fun. But in, we would still play at Christmas time. I would race home for Christmas if I could and get a still day. Play with the and play with my brothers. We'd, oh, that's we'd awesome. break in the rink in my hometown, and all the town kids would show up, and we'd have a big scrimmage going on. It was it was awesome. Hockey players are the best, buddy. They it's still a, play. It's, it's a different culture. It, it really is. I was down in Hermosa Beach working out at a gym yeah. down there where a lot of Kobe used to come in all the time. Yeah. And a lot of the tennis players and football players. And Kenny O'Brien's yeah. a really good friend of mine. Yeah. The, the old quarterback with the sure. Jets and with the, the Eagles. Jets. Yeah. yeah. And so he speaks. Really high at Jim, by the way. He, you know, and, and Mark and all the guys. So, yeah. uh, Kenny and Mark and Eric Karos, the baseball player, were sure. both in the gym. Yeah. And they said, Where are you going? I said, I'm going to Canada to play some alumni games. And they're like, Why? Mm -hmm. I said, Because hockey players never retire. We there just change go. leagues. We keep playing. Yes. You know, and charity events or not, we just have fun getting out there and playing with each other. And Carol's just like, God, I haven't picked up a baseball bat since I retired. And Kenny looks at me and goes, well, there's really no place for us to play, right? <laughs> <laughs> we go and tackle each other. Um, yeah, exactly. But so hockey players never stop playing. No, that's true. It, and, you know, Howe played until his 50s. That's, a, I mean, wow. That, he, yeah. Incredible, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So, Marty, let's talk about when you and... Uh, Gretzky come to LA, right. and I, and did Curry uh, did Curry come later? If, later, and we were okay. trying to get him, but Glenn Sailor would not wouldn't trade, part with him. Wouldn't part with him. Yeah, and it took Yari. He had to go over to Europe for a whole year and play over there. Yeah. basically to tell Glenn Sather, the GM in Edmonton, listen, I'm I'm not coming back. Uh, I want you to trade me, uh, right? Yes. Because Edmonton, the owner, from a financial standpoint, wasn't going to keep those guys together. Yes. He just wasn't going to do it. He was making a lot of money. He didn't feel like he needed to pay everybody. Right. Right? So, and then with, with Wayne leaving, and then Mark went to New York, and, you know, so Yari, yeah, it was great to have Yari, but, but when we got to L.A., I didn't know the responsibility Wayne Gretzky had. Right. Until we got there. Yeah. And the hockey world was watching everybody. Yeah. Because our owner was a great salesman and he got into trouble later, but he was a great salesman. He well, was he, really good to us. Hey, he changed he changed the league. Absolutely. The, the guy was, you know, amazing. He, he had he everybody did. believe that the game was non regional. Right. He 
we, our training camp wouldn't be traditional. We would go to all these places because Bruce could sell Wayne Gretzky right. for one exhibition game in right. Greensboro, North Carolina. We'd go into Houston. We'd go into Dallas. We'd go into Phoenix. We'd yeah. go into Denver. We'd go into all these places that didn't have teams. Right. We'd play in the the the, uh, the baseball stadium in, in Tampa Bay. We, yes. You know, played in the old rink in in Miami before they had a team. And yeah. And so Wayne was the selling point. Mm-hmm. And I think they believe we'd fill those buildings, yes. and they believe that that was a possibility after the success in Los Angeles. I don't know if anybody had a bigger influence on the expansion of the NHL no, than, I, than, than those kings in that era. Yeah, and, and I, I think it really goes to Wayne and to Bruce McNall. I re, like yeah. Bruce. Bruce, I think, pushed into the league the idea of having the out of venue league games right. in non NHL cities, which yeah. quickly became expansion teams. Right. right, San Jose and uh, Anaheim eventually. Yeah, De- well, Denver, yes. uh, Dallas, Colorado, all of those yeah. places, right? Yeah. So, and some of those old buildings. I mean, there's some wild stories. Buddy, I was going to say, <laughs> you know what? It, 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 you had the Lakers, and they were, you know, uh, the the Lake Show, and they, you know, running up and down the court. But those Kings in that era, that was just. I mean, I got to tell you, I, I moved from Boston, L.A. I never missed a game, Marty. And the memories of those games in the forum and uh, what you guys were able to accomplish was incredible. Even though we didn't win the cup, yeah, we had that great run in '93. But um, what, what it was is just great, incredible? The forum, the forum what Body. a great place! To, I that, mean, I almost felt like I was Caesar's Palace, right? Yeah, just right in the middle of it. It was that the forum because. Like, Magic was great to us. He would come yeah. in the locker room, and Magic's like, I am so fired up for you guys. He, you know, he was he was great. Kareem was great. There were so many great guys. I used to go sit in the Lakers locker room with the trainers yeah. and just like be, like to be around the rink. But but the Raiders players were awesome. Like, Marcus yeah. Allen and, and, and you know, uh, Steve Berline and all those guys were, were really great. And, and, and really really endeared themselves and and you know you're after the game there's chuck norris there's ronald reagan coming in the oh, locker buddy. room and I everybody mean, i mean john McEnroe would sit there big smile on his face yeah. and we would talk and i'd tease him while yelling at refs and yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was a wonderful wonderful time for me to make a progression from the edmonton learning how to learning smaller how to market well, but i learned how to lead from these those guys and mm-hmm. then when i went to la i implemented it and yeah. The door was really open for me to grow and expand as a player mm-hmm. in a in a in a market that really kind of embraced s- embraced all the players. Yeah, uh, uh, unbelievably. Yeah, it changed it changed everything in Southern California. I mean, uh, it was just such a great era. Me as a sports fan. Yeah. Because you know to watch Jim in the Super Bowl. You know, right. Come back with the, the bad shoulder and basically telling Dick, "No, I'm playing." Right. Right. You know, you you see those things and Mark Rippey in here and, yeah. and you know winning winning a, a Super Bowl and mm-hmm. and you know Kobe and all those guys. From a distance, when I was in Edmonton, you see those guys, and you, you're like, that guy's a great athlete. That guy's a great player. When I got to L.A., I was around them. Right. Right? You're, you're there. I'm going to work out. You got out. the exposure. But, but what I also found, too, is that those guys deal with a lot of the same stuff we do. Right. You know, from not only contracts and different things, but how career longevity, injuries, yeah. working out. Like, when you see the guys training, and we would talk about their training and our training and injuries and which doctors and all the rest of the stuff. I mean, there were so many similarities between all those athletes mm-hmm. and the focus. And we could learn from those guys on the focus and different things. Like Kobe. I mean, his work ethic was something that everybody could strive to do, oh, right? Oh, buddy, yeah. yeah. They just put up a statue uh, yeah. of him. Rightfully so, yeah. well, obviously. They're going to put one up there for you, Marty? Uh, well, huh? yeah, maybe in the post office. <laughs> <laughs> just my picture. <laughs> so today, Marty, I know you do a lot of charity work. Obviously, that's why we're out here today at Angel Park. Uh, and you're involved with Jim McMahon's uh, Invitational. Yeah. Love having you here. Um, what else have you got going from that perspective? You know, I've, I've got three kids. I've got a 16, 15, and 12 year old. Oh, wow. My daughter will get a volley, volleyball scholarship. She's worked her tail off. I'm really, really proud of her. Today's her birthday. Uh, uh, my, she's 16, happy birthday. Seven. What's Emma, your name? Emma. Emma, happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I'm really enjoying being a dad, and I can put the time into it. I don't yeah. know if I could have done it when I was playing. Sure. Um, and then I do a ton of charity events. 
I go up all over Canada. I go into, on, you know, Ontario, but I do a lot of stuff in California and, and Arizona and different different cities. I go up in the South Dakota and uh, 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 Iowa and different places for dinners and things. And the amount of money we raise for, you know, helipads, for CAT scan machines, for MRI machines, for, you know, emergency uh, um, uh, wards uh, in hospitals or building hospitals mm -hmm. or, you know, just supporting the communities however they need it mm -hmm. and so to go in and be a part of that boy what a feel good oh, and I sometimes you, I go back or I'll get an email going we just completed our project right oh. and you see pictures and it really really is awesome and I get a chance to see so many of the guys and like I did an event up in Saskatchewan with Brock Lesnar Yes, which, which was really he, cool. Yeah, he moved to Canada. Yeah, yeah. No, he married. Yeah, a, yeah married a Canadian, yeah. and he's he is way off the dirt road. And yeah, that, but really good, that, really nice. So, man. who now, Marty? If it was you and Brock back in the day, and he was on, <laughs> who are you putting the money on? Well, but here's the thing, and and uh, you, I because he's not a boxer, right? I, I you got, could box. I got asked to fight Butterbee the one year. You they did. came to me, and I was I was going to do it. He was a big load, that guy. Yeah, he was. I, I, I went. You were quick. I went to the Goosens. Okay. And, and, and uh, I, I was training with them. I went up to Big Bear, got my butt kicked for like six six weeks. Wow. And I was sparring with a guy who was ranked 15th in the world. And I lo I watched a lot of Butterbeans fights and different things. And I really felt that I could just, my I had so much more length than he did. Yeah. And keep him out if I can keep moving and, and keep moving moving to his, his left. I really felt that I could just keep them off with the jab and just keep them out there. Yeah. And and then I, I really felt like I could direct that. Now, Bob Aram, I, there was people that showed up to spar with me up yeah. there in Big Bear, mm -hmm. and it didn't go well for them. Oh. I mean, it my, as my trainer, one of the Goosens, Larry Goosen, said, here's your chance to beat up somebody else because <laughs> I've been getting beat up by uh, uh, Lawrence Claybay right. um, every day and taping my hands knowing I'm going to get a beating. Knocked a tooth out, broke my ribs, and, and like that summer. I wow. was just, I trained hard. And all of a sudden, the offer went from a million dollars in all the pay-per-view in Canada down to like $100,000, no pay-per-view, no nothing. And I was like, okay, what's going on here? Uh -huh. right? But so the offer changed and whatever. Gotcha. But I was training and I couldn't beat the really good guys because that was such a different discipline. Sure. But if I got them on ice, oh, whole different right, game, it would right? been a whole different game. Speaking of which, so who was, and you fought a lot of tough guys, obviously. Who who was your your biggest nemesis in the in the NHL? Well, I I, I don't think anybody. I'm was there anybody who gave you a hard time? Well, no, you know, you know, like you know, getting ready for a game. I didn't look at the game. She, oh my God, this guy's playing. This guy's. Right. I would go out there and warm. You'd see guys because I think where I was where I was there was a few guys yeah. around the league Bob Colberts and Dave Browns and those big big Colbert, guys yes. right and yeah. guys like Kenny Baumgartner they were they were tough right. right and you knew it and it might happen that night right. but there was a lot of respect and we looked after our teams yep. and there was a respect because we could go about it the right way we didn't have to hide anything just, no. just go and do it and uh but the, it's the guys that I admired. Like, I went to Edmonton, and Dave Semenko was there. Oh, I mean, and I love him, And he was great to me. Yeah. You know, and Clark Gillies. When yeah. I was 20 years old playing with the Penguins, Clark Gillies was really tough. Playing with the Islanders, they were winning Stanley Cups. Great player and, and, and a tough guy. Very tough. Yeah. Very, like, right A tough. real man. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. you know, a 20-year-old kid, I went up to him and... You know, almost challenged, like challenged him with the play. Yeah. And he dropped the gloves, and he said to me later, he goes, "I, I really didn't want to fight because here's right. this twenty-year-old kid." He says, "But here's a twenty-year-old kid trying to make his way in the league." Right. He says, "The least." He did you a favor. He said, "The least I could do was honor that for him." Yeah. Right. And and and, and that had to go the other way as you as, went on in your career, yeah. right? Because there had to be guys that made it by getting into it with you. You know what right? kind of drove me crazy later, though? Mm -hmm. As I got to be a veteran, and those young kids came out to fight me, I'd fight them. Right. But sometimes their coach would put them out when I'm coming off after killing a two-minute penalty. Uh, put them on right at that awesome. moment. Right? Yeah. And trying to catch me when I, catch me in a, in a time. And I'd still fight them. And then I'd come out of the penalty box, I'd go over to the bench and say, send the kid out again. Right. right? <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if the kids... And right. the coaches, the coaches wouldn't, wouldn't do it. Wouldn't send them out. Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't put them in that position. Yeah. And I'm like, you really want to make them... But, so don't, don't do that. Don't make it a fake. Right. Like, let the kid... 
find his way, right? right? But some of the coaches tried to engineer it, like go out and pretend yeah. to fight and don't fight. And some of the coaches screwed up that respect side of it. I, yeah, and right. it's a different game today. It, I, I mean, is. if you're a fan and you grew up like I did watching you and other, uh, to me, that was a golden era of hockey. It was just it's, unbelievable. It, it's buddy. funny. You, you know, I've got a question to, to a lot of people. I'm like, can you tell me when back in the day was? Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> you'll hear back in the day, it could right. be tw 20 years ago, it could be yeah, 70 years it's ago. It's true. Right? Yes. But people say, oh, back in the day. Yeah. And, uh, I'm back in your day. Yeah. yeah. But I was see, a fan. Because when I started, there was three, three, four, five guys on every team that would drop the gloves and fight. Yeah. Now, they all tried to be better players. Right. And it was important to play. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that I would, did as I got older, the young guys that I was around, I tried to help them be better players. Yeah. Because I always said, you really made it as a tough guy yeah. when they dress you and play you in the playoffs. Well, you had big goals. And, and, and as somebody who watched, you know, you play consistently, you were a good player. And, and it was like when you could have a guy out there that was an enforcer, but you knew he was a threat, too, to score. That, that, was a, that was a game changer. And you were one of the guys that could do that. And, I mean, I remember, like, John Wensink growing up tough in Boston guy. way back. Yeah. He was, he was well, a teammates tough guy. Love he, like, him. challenged the whole right. bench one yeah. time, right? Yeah. But Wensink didn't have that same ability But to Terry O'Reilly did. O'Reilly did. Yeah, and see, there was guys like Terry O'Reilly, and I really looked at Clark Gillies and those guys. And yeah. I'm like, okay, and I remember saying to an agent I had early on, I said, you know, I'd really like to score 20 goals in the NHL. And he goes, oh, just be thankful for every game. I fired him. <laughs> just fired him. Because he didn't believe in me. Right. Right? I yeah. just fired. You're fired. Yeah, right? And <laughs> properly so. Yeah. So, Marty, going back, what would be your, you obviously accomplished a tremendous amount. Stanley Cups, everything else, Transition LA, the expansion that you helped create there, and all the great things you've done in the NHL. What do you point to as, and, and maybe there isn't one, one great, the greatest moment in your career or in hockey? Well, the greatest moment I ever had in, in hockey was as a little boy we would go and we'd skate on this old canal that ran through the farm with my brothers and we were always in the seventh game of the Stanley Cup Finals. We'd awesome. be up in that big chicken barn, it was the seventh game of the Stanley Cup Finals and, yeah. and it was like, it, yeah. the intensity was the same yeah. and you're always in, in your playing and you love it and I, you know, every year you're watching the playoffs and every Saturday night was a big deal at our house on Hockey Night, Hockey in, Canada, night in Canada all across, yeah. every Saturday. So in 1987, we're in the seventh game of the Stanley Cup Finals mm -hmm. in Edmonton, yep. and my mom and dad are at the game, and you know it, it's it's this is the dream of a young boy. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, my dad couldn't watch the game; he was walking around underneath Nervous. underneath the stands, yeah. right? Yeah. And they let him down there to walk around, and he'd walk yeah. out where the Zamboni is to see if, if there was a whole the crowd was cheering or whatever. And he'd go back and nervous as all get out. Well, when we finally won, it was yeah. almost like the, the trainer said to me on the bench, here, give me your helmet and gloves. And I'm like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Because I was so focused. You know, yeah. we were rolling three lines and playing yeah. a ton, and the score was 3-1 for us. And he pointed up the clock, and there was like 18 seconds left in the game. And it wow. dawned on me, oh, my God. We're going to win. We're going to win. Because you're so focused. Yeah. And you put so much into it. Yeah. Well, when we won, they opened the doors and rolled out the red carpet. My dad was standing in the doorway. And I brought my dad out on the ice with oh, me. Wow. And I gave him a great big hug and I said, We got our name on the Stanley Cup. Right? And you know, what a, I just what a moment of the pride. only way it would have been better is if my mom was there yeah. with right at that moment. You know, yeah. it was because so many people put so much into it for any of these of guys course. to be successful. Yeah. Right. So that's that's my my favorite moment. And it couldn't have been with a better group of people. And if anybody starts an organization, mm -hmm. Uh, doing the quality of people you surround yourself with. Sure. Those guys, as for me as a young player, the quality of the players I played with, they were great, great players. Yeah. They were better people. And, yeah. and the, all of the guys that people, not necessarily your star stars, mm -hmm. all those other guys were really good players, but they were such a strength in our team. Yeah. It was really, really a great environment. Well, I got to tell you, uh, Brett McMahon again, what a pleasure to have the Stanley Cup champion here with me today, Marty McSorley, uh, for all you did for L.A. and the Kings fans, Marty, I can't tell you, this is emotional here for me. Thank you, I, Marty. I, I love to go back so and awesome see the guys. I here. cheer for the current players, and I think, you know, what Vegas has done here has been been wonderful. I, you see Dallas. I got my buddy Peter DeBoer's coaching there. And, mm -hmm. You know, I just, I go and cheer the guys. I watch as much hockey as I can, and I'm, I'm, I'm still a hockey fan. Oh, you're the best. Who do you got yeah. in the game, Marty? Who's going to win on Sunday? Uh... 
It's a tough one. I think Kansas City's going to win. Because you know I think that kid at quarterback finds a way. To do it. He just finds yeah. a way, right? You're right. Yeah, and you're the third guy I've had on today. And nobody wants to bet against Mahomes. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is that Debo has been dinged up. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey's been dinged up. Yeah. If they lose either one of those guys, that's a huge loss for them. If yeah. they lose either one of them in the game and they've been dinged up. Yeah. And Mahomes just, he spreads the ball around. And yeah. He, you know, he's, Pacheco's had a great year. Yeah. I mean, that's, and the, their defense is better than you think. Yeah. And Andy Reid's been there. He makes adjustments well. Kyle Shannon, I think, is a really, really good coach. He is. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to, I really expect it to be a really good game. Yeah. Uh, but I think Kansas City will figure it out. I'm with you, Marty. <laughs> Again, great pleasure to have Marty McSorley here today on Brent McMahon 3. Uh, Brent, let me ask you who's going to yes, win the sir. Stanley Cup this year. Well, you know, I was going to pull for the Kings. We, were, we started <laughs> off great, buddy. You know, I'm a diehard Kings fan. Yes. But uh, I think at this point... It, uh, you know, I'd love to see one of the Canadian teams win. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe Vancouver has a shot at it. I think um, if I had to go out, I'd probably go with a repeat of Vegas. Yeah. What I do mean, you think, Marty? Well, I would really love to see Edmonton win again. I mean, I think that Connor McDavid is worth the price of admission. And, he, you know, he is so – they've just come off that 16-game winning Playing streak. Playing the Kings tonight, buddy. Paul, yeah, Paul <laughs> Coffey is, is on the bench. He's been a great, yeah. great influence on that team. Yeah. And I see Connor McDavid fired up, like really fired Buddy. up and believing in his team. So, they kind of look like you're, they're starting to play like you're on 16 in a row. Well, but they've got McDavid and then Dreisaitl. It's as close as you'll get to Messier and, and Gretzky. And Gretzky, right? yeah. But, so I'm hoping for Edmonton, but Vegas and Colorado. If Colorado, tough can, teams. If Colorado can get healthy. Yeah. Because McKinnon is wonderful. He is good. Their defense can all really skate. If they yep, get good, car is unbelievable. But they have four guys that are really great skaters. Yeah. And they, when they played two years ago and and won against Edmonton, yeah, their defense were really matched up well against McDavid, who is the best skater in the world. Right. And so, the Colorado, you, you four or five guys on defense that are really good. You can't, makes it tough to it beat makes, them. Yes, yes. Yeah, I agree with you. It's we'll, we'll get further in the season, but it's uh, a lot of parity in the NHL. Yeah, the, right the deadline now. will be interesting because whether Vegas makes a move, whether Colorado adds because they've lost Landeskog, right? right who was a big part. Yeah. Um, if they go out and do something, yeah. And Edmonton, if if they do something, but. Yeah. I don't know if they want to mess with it right now because they really seem to be firing at all cylinders. Yeah. It, well, the goaltending, it doesn't seem to be what it used to be. It, so it's the goal such tending, a hard position. Yeah. But, I mean, how did Vegas win last year without a what you'd call a number one starter? Really, they had quick, but he was kind of the backup at that point. I had people that loved the Florida story last year. Yeah. And so they were like, who's going to win? Who's going to win? I yeah. said, oh, no, Vegas will handle them. Because mm -hmm. Vegas is deep. They were They're deep. deep. They're four lines deep. Buddy, and they that's keep Stone. coming. How about Stone? Absolutely, yeah. He's an animal. But they went out and got him. I think that uh, uh, Kelly McCrimmon uh, yeah. and, and, and the guys that are there, they un yeah. they understood what they needed after that first year. They were a little small. Yeah. And they added some size. Yeah. And I mean, they, they didn't have salary cap issues when they came in. Right. You know, they were the first expansion team in a salary cap era. Right. So they got four salary cap casualties kinda, that other teams didn't, yeah, right? They, it, so they kind of got a, they got out of the gate pretty good. They, <laughs> but the NHL was smart enough to know that with the Raiders coming into the town, they needed to get a toehold before the Raiders got there. True. Right? Yep. And so, now maybe the A's. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's the Vegas is really good. They're deep. Yep. They just keep coming. Are you going to be out there on the course today, Marty? Oh, I'm loving it. So last loving year we got all these football players here, a lot of baseball players. You know who won this tournament last year? Jeremy Roenick. <laughs> I'm just saying, guys. Well, if JR, JR, if you're listening, the reason you're a good golfer is because you didn't play enough years late into the spring. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to leave it on that note, folks. Thank you, Marty. Thank you Such for having pleasure. me. My Such pleasure. An honor, man. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you, my friend.